both the US and China are trying to ramp up domestic semiconductor production right now. W- w- where do you see that kind of heading over the next few years? Um, nowhere. So okay. uh, this is one of the biggest misconceptions about the CHIPS Act, which I support and I think is a great thing. But the CHIPS Act is not about building an independent chips industry in the United States. That is never going to happen. It is about stabilizing the gradual decline of the U.S. chips industry. Right? We, <laughs> we invented this industry. We, pr- we produced most of the chips for the first couple of decades. <clears throat> and then we decided to outsource it to Asia, to Taiwan, to Korea, to Japan, and other places. And largely because of labor costs. You know, they pay $25,000 a year to engineers in Taiwan that work in these chips fabs. Find me a place in the United States where you're going to match that, right? For like masters yeah. and PhDs, right? You won't. Yeah. Um, not to mention yeah, regulatory and environment. 10, 10x, 10x in yeah. the US, right? So, you know, the CHIPS Act, if everything goes well, um, which is a big if, by the way, anytime you do industrial policy, but if everything goes just absolutely perfectly, we will go from producing about 12% of the world's chips to maybe 20% at most. Taiwan will still pro- produce the overwhelming amount of chips and, and feed the world uh, in terms of its chips hunger. So that is not changing anytime soon, not in the next 10, 15 years, certainly the time period that we're talking about, impossible to predict afterwards, but for, for the period that, that matters to us. So that's um, on Taiwan. And in particular, the advanced chips, I think uh, TSMC is likely to lead because TSMC's leadership on advanced chips also is not well understood. Um, the only got into this game in the late 2000s. And there was one company that was absolutely essential to them getting into the manufacturing of advanced chips from foundational chips that they um, produced mostly before then. And that company is called Apple. Apple, when it decided to get off the Intel chips and design their own chips, needed a manufacturing partner. It wasn't going to be Intel, right? They don't produce, uh, only now they're starting to get in producing other people's chips, but before they produced only their own chips. And the biggest uh, producer of the ch- of chips uh, were Samsung. Can't do that. That's a competitor, right? Produces their own phones. And TSMC. Now, TSMC did not produce advanced chips. And Apple basically came to them and said, we're going to help you. Let's work together. There are like 3,000 engineer- Apple engineers in TSMC fabs in Taiwan that are helping them advance their um, chips industry. And Apple gets first dibs on any sort of three nanometer, five nanometer products that TSMC produces. It first goes into Apple products and then everyone else benefits from it. That's been key to TSMC's dominance. Well, it's very unlikely that Apple is going to use Intel competitor. It's very unlikely they'll use Samsung. So I think that there's going to be a continued dependency on TSMC. Now, Apple has been instrumental in helping to push TSMC to build a fab in Arizona, but that fab is not going to have enough capacity to even satisfy Apple alone, much less the rest of the world. So, so the dependency on Taiwan is going to be there. Now, the big question mark is China, though. We've managed to curtail China's ambitions largely in the advanced chip market uh, by preventing export of advanced equipment to them. So basically, we said that uh, in the Biden executive orders um, of a couple of years ago that anything below 18 nanometers, um, any equipment that's used to produce chips below 18 nanometers cannot go to China. Um, The problem is that there are some loopholes because you can use a lot of dual use equipment, like equipment you would use to produce chips at 40 nanometers. You could kind of um, uh, MacGyver to also produce some more advanced chips. And in fact, that's exactly what China has done when they announced their seven nanometer chip last summer for Huawei. It was built with that dual use equipment. And most uh, people in the chips industry think that they can even go to five nanometers uh, with that equipment, probably not below that. Uh, that's where you're going to need to really use that ASML, uh, ultraviolet, uh, extreme ultraviolet machine um, to, to get to three to two and so forth. Um, but they're trying. But, you know, for, by and large, we've been able to curtail their, their ability to produce a lot of those chips. But what are they doing now? They're saying, OK, well, advanced market, really, really tough export controls are impacting us. Let's dominate the majority of the chips industry, which is actually not advanced. It is these foundational yeah, chips. stuff that's been made in the 80s and 90s, right? And just making it better, well, and just making it cheaper, right? In well, the, it's actually a misnomer. So, so they're often called legacy or mature chips. I prefer the term foundational that I've coined that, that the industry is now starting to adopt because they're actually fairly advanced. Even though nanometers are large, you're talking 40 nanometers, 100 nanometers, 160 nanometers, 
nanometers is not the only way to determine yep. if something is advanced. It's just one parameter, right? And there's a lot of innovation that happens in those chips, and those chips are actually essential for everything. So, you, you know, you, you take a look at this phone, right? There are only three advanced chips in this phone. There's the CPU, the processor, memory, and the Qualcomm uh, uh, chip uh, for the base path, right? Everything else that controls the screen, the camera, the power, the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, GPS, it's all of these foundational chips where yep. you need... Um, I assume in your car, it's the same. Most of them, almost oh, everything almost is Almost all of them yeah. in your car yeah. are, are foundational chips. In uh, your laptop, same thing, right? Um, you know, we talk about GPUs that you need to, to train AI models. Well, what controls the networking and the power for, for those computers, uh, servers that are running those GPUs? Foundational chips, right? They're yep. in everything. It's sort of like, you know, saying, well, advanced chips are like carbon fiber, this advanced material that's more durable, that's fantastic. And foundational chips are steel and aluminum. Well, you can't build yep. anything without steel. Yeah, aluminum. concrete. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. Yeah. You still need it. And China is trying to dominate that, that place. And unless we stop them with trade measures, will achieve dominance probably in the next two to three years, where they're engaging in overcapacity and producing a ton of those chips and dumping them at reduced prices on the markets and driving everyone out. In fact, TSMC has made noise that they want to get out of the foundational chips game entirely because uh, it's so hard to compete with China. And it's great to focus on just advanced, better margins there. And China is not allowed to compete because of U.S. export controls, right? So, and, and you, is that inevitability, no. or are there other, you know, countries slash companies around the globe who can compete? Is well, there, yeah. So, there things in Vietnam, are, are there things in you know Mexico? I don't know other places that can compete there. Yeah. So, there's lots of companies that produce foundational chips. TSMC produces a lot of them. Mm -hmm. uh, Texas Instruments is one of the big players, and 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 many others. Um, but they're going to be essentially driven out of that business if China is dumping that product below market prices at which you can't compete, right? And this is something that China has a lot of experience with and 100% success track record, right? They've done this in steel, they've done this in solar panels, they're now doing this in AVs, they've done it in batteries. So you dump it on, on the Western markets, you drive everyone out of business, and then you establish effectively a monopoly. So that's what they're trying to achieve with chips. We can stop them. But sir, when they, in, in, in historically, when they've dumped it, do then they raise prices when everyone gets out or do they keep prices low? They keep it low to prevent you from, uh, from reestablishing so, so that. So in some ways they're not necessarily dumbing it. They're, 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 they're just, well, they're just figuring out ways to lower the price. Yeah. The problem uh, oh, is so, it's subsidized by, by the Chinese state, right? So you're not operating with a market economy. And again, they want leverage as opposed to just monopoly pricing power, because yeah. at the end of the day, they're trying to get us to sing to their tune, whether it's on issues like Taiwan or other things that, that matter to China. So having having uh, us by by you know our privates effectively is is more important to them. And how do they? Prices. Is it is it just that they give you know their companies forgivable loans or what are they what are they doing to to make it uh, uh, you know, to lower the price essentially? What are they doing to like put their weight yeah, on the scale? Yeah, it, it's an entire cottage industry in China. It could be preferential loans from from state owned banks. Some of these are state owned companies, so they don't even concern themselves with profits, right? Uh, it's uh, uh, in, in grants uh, to to help with overcapacity. You know, the chips industry. In some ways, the Chips Act is kind of like that for us, right? I mean, we're just kind of doing the same thing, right? Well, we, we're, gi we're giving uh, grants to companies, but we're not pushing them to lower prices on their products and, and dump them on, uh, on other markets, right? That, that's, that's a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, but also they can't because they're, 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 it's too expensive. Like we don't have the ability. They, maybe they would if we could, right? Yeah. The workforce is very expensive and, and it's just very hard for us to build in this country, unfortunately. Um, you know, a lot of regulations, uh, high labor costs, and just the lack of trades. You know, I was, I was um, talking to one fab manufacturer in the US and they said, you know, they're trying to expand, they're getting chips money. Chips Act money, and they said, you know, to build a new fab, we literally have to bring in welders, welders from Taiwan, because there's not enough high-end welders in the United States that we can find to build it's these, crazy. you know, vacuum, uh, essentially clean rooms that you need to 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 manufacture chips. So we just don't have even a lot of that expertise here.